Are you sheltering in place, isolated, feeling alone? <coughs> well, then you're just like us. Hit me. From Studio P in Sausalito, the home of the quarantined hit, it's time for... Suckatash. Suckatash Shut-In, the Soundcast stimulus package featuring snippets from comedy... Soundcasts. And now, here's your host for this episode, Tyson Saner! Saner. Saluto and estas me, Tyson Saner. Welcome to Succotash Shut-In. I am your every other week host, bringing you this episode, which is enumerated 246. Last week, my co-host and every other week show host, Mark Hershon, brought you episode 245, which was a chats episode featuring a conversation with comedian and comedy writer for television, Michael Rowe. It's a fun episode that I recommend you listen to by going to our home site at www.succotashshow.com. Of course, if you are listening to this on a podcast service of some other kind, such as Apple or Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, The Laughable App, iHeartRadio, or even YouTube, you should most definitely be able to listen to it and other episodes that way. If this is your first time here, thank you for listening. Aside from chats with notably interesting folks, episodes of Succotash have been known to feature clips of soundcasts from all over the English-speaking parts of the world. This episode is one of those types of episodes. I've got clips from the Soundcasts, the Brendan Fraser Podcast, Fascination Street, and the Bill Burt Podcast. I've also got a seasonally appropriate bit of advertising from our longtime fake sponsor, Henderson's Pants, for you. So, without further ado, let's get to the clips, shall we? First up, the Brendan Fraser Podcast, from Carla and Daniel. The description says, Carla and Daniel talk anything and everything Brendan Fraser. The clip I've chosen is from an episode from February 12th, 2021. It is episode number 20. At the time I clipped it, it was the most recent episode. It is titled, Lemmy or God? The episode description says, It's time to discuss airheads. Join us for a conversation about this 90s classic featuring Fraser, Ushimi, and Sandler. So in this clip, the duo break down elements of the plot of the movie with some observations about its place in comedy history and its cult film status. Well, let's talk about the basic plot of this movie. It's pretty simple, right? You have, they're what? They're in a band called the Lone Rangers. The Lone Rangers, yeah. Which is fantastic. They're called the Lone Rangers. The Lone Rangers? That's original. How can you pluralize the Lone Ranger? What's wrong with that? Well, there's three of you. You're not exactly lone. Shouldn't you be the three rangers? It's like, what, three best friends. They're all, like, what, in their 20, like, mid to late 20s. Yeah. I think uh, Adam Sandler's character, is uh, his name is Boy Pip. So he's, a, like, a little shy guy, um, funny and everything like that. And then you have Adam Sandler, who's, like, I guess you can call him the brains of the... Um, the friendship or whatever. See Buscemi, he plays uh, Rex. So he's kind of like the more hardcore, not too serious guy, but he's like, he he means business. They're in a band and they're trying to basically be noticed during this time. It's like, they play like, it's not hardcore music, but it's like rock and roll. Yeah, and they're like diehard, like true late 80s, early 90s rock. Rock, grunge type deal. And they're trying to, you know, make it big. And they're trying to uh, get to this radio station that's super popular that pretty much puts if they get demos from certain bands or something like that. And if the guy literally puts them on the air, they make it big after that. Fraser's character, Chaz, he's the one that is trying, like, literally trying to just give their demo. And, like, you can see it in the, you know, the beginning of the film where he dresses up like he's the uh, delivery guy and goes through, like, security. And it seems like security already knows him because he do- he's, it seems like he's done this so many times just to get his demo to be played. What's great about the movie is, like, the goals are pretty clear. They're a rock band. They just want their song on the radio. Simple. And, like, Chaz is, like, the the true artist all about rock. Like he wants to earn a record deal. He's not going to take it just like to have it. He's all about earning it. So Mm -hmm. (laughs) yeah, he wants that respect from like the music industry. Exactly. And I mean, that's Mm -hmm. it. They basically at one point show up 
they have their fake water pistols and they <laughs> take people hostage at a radio station. They want the DJ to play their, their song. And of course there's always going to be problems like the tape, the reel yeah. not working or the tape being destroyed. Like it's very simple, but it's great. And I mean, it's, it's the character. It's, it's so much fun to watch even Adam Sandler. And I mean, this is like early nineties where he's not mm -hmm. overtaking. He's not the big star of the film, you know? So he, he's there, yeah. but then you're like the classic Adam Sandler moments where, I mean, the way like he screams his lines sometimes, I don't know how to describe Adam Sandler, but he, <laughs> he's so aggressive too. Yeah, it's so easy to watch this and be like, <laughs> Oh, I can see why Adam Sandler went on to become like, the main star of his movies for like the next 20 some years. Like, yeah. Do you have any favorite moments of this movie or before you watched it recently, when was the last time you'd watched this movie? Yeah. It's been a minute, a hot minute since I watched it. So it was fun watching it again and kind of like, it, it made me reminisce during that time, like the nineties and like music and how radio was such a huge deal. Unlike now, now it's just, you know, your Spotify, Apple, you know, like streaming services now and not the radio, how it used to be. Um, but it was a huge deal back in the day. And it just made me feel like, you know, 90s music was like superior to what it is now. I mean, I'm, I have to say it. I mean, it really was. Well, it's, <laughs> I mean, yeah, listen to me. I prefer late 90s pop, but early 90s rock, it was great, too. Um, yeah. It, what's tough is because I view movies differently. Like I think Airheads, I looked at Rotten Tomatoes and its score on Rotten Tomatoes is 23%. Yeah. Like it bombed in the box office. Like I think it, right. even, it didn't even make like 6 million, I think. It said 4.9, which is insane. Yeah. But again, at the same time, like over well, the years, so many people have seen it. Yeah, so that's why it became such a cult classic, because if you have ever, like, online, you'll see, like, memes. It's like, if you don't know who this band is, like, like are you even a true... Um... Right, yeah, I see that all the time, yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you so, don't know who this band is, you don't know rock and roll or something or, like that. Yeah, so there's, like, various, you know, memes of that, so it's really awesome. Um, so clearly it's become, like, a cult classic. So you can find the show on Twitter at capital B, capital F, R-A-S-E-R, -S -E capital P-O-D-C-A-S-T, that is B-F, <laughs> B-Fraser podcast. Uh, Carla can be reached at Kickapoo, that is at uh, all lowercase K-I-C-K-A-P, and then one, two, three, four, five O's. And Daniel Stephen can be found on Twitter at capital, uh, uh, sorry, at Stuck on Sorna, which is a reference to Jurassic Park 3, I believe. And that is at capital S T U C K capital O N capital S O R N A. And you can also reach out to them at their email, which is also B Fraser podcast at gmail.com. Next up is fascination street from Steve Owens. This is a soundcast that has been featured on Succotash a few times in the past. Uh, it's description is pretty straightforward. It says fascinating people, fascinating stories, and then join me as I get to know actors, musicians, comedians, directors, athletes, authors, podcasters, and storytellers. Yes, there is quite the eclectic mix of personalities that Mr. Steve Owens has the opportunity to have conversations with. The clip I've taken is uh, from the episode from March 14th, 2021, which features John Sylvain. And the episode description says, Take a walk with me down Fascination Street as I get to know John Sylvain. John is a podcast host on the Nooner Podcast on the Smodcast Podcast Network, as well as an adjunct film professor at Cal State Polytech. John is also the founder of the Sacred Fools Theater in Los Angeles and the creator of You Know It! Exclamation point, the game, my favorite trivia card-based game. In this episode, we chat about all of these things, plus his time at Yale and his time in Seattle running a small theater company. In this clip, the game You Know It is discussed, as well as Nooner Podcast, which has been clipped on this program a few times in the almost 10 years that both Succotash and Nooner have been in existence. Well, one thing that you are great at, and this I, I know about you just from knowing you as much as or as little as I do, uh, one thing that you're really great at is starting things. Yeah. You started 
or helped start three different theater and or improv companies and troops. You started and followed through with two books, at least, as far as I know. Mm-hmm. You even invented a game, a trivia game, mm-hmm. which is one of my favorite things. Definitely my favorite thing about you, but it's one of my favorite things just in general that's happened in the last couple of years because that game is so much fun. Steve, your support has been so great. and I re- I'm so glad you like it. And it's been wonderful the way you've been talking about it. I'm really glad it worked out. I mean, we can talk about how that developed. It's kind of amazing because it doesn't feel like I invented it. One of the things that I really enjoy about it is that I feel like I get to hear about it when it was in its nascent stages because Mm -hmm. I would hear you every week. Listeners, streetwalkers, John Sylvain is one-fourth of the current group of hosts that is on the Nooner podcast, on the Smodcast podcast network. Mm -hmm. You've been doing this for what, like five or six years? What, Nooner or you know it? Nooner. Nooner, it hasn't been that long. I think it's been two years. There's no way it's been two years. Get out of here. For real? Yeah, it's been two years, yeah. Wow. It hasn't been that long, yeah. Boy, do you make the time drag. I know. (laughs) (laughs) So it was well over a year ago that you talked about this trivia card game that you were trying to develop and you talked about it on the show and then a couple of times you would bring in you know sort of sample questions and and y'all would play around or whatever and it just seemed so engaging and so much fun that when you finally did do a kickstarter so that other people could play and enjoy this game i was over the moon I did participate in the Kickstarter. I got this really dope-ass box, which is a full-size game with, I don't know, like 288 cards or something like that. A lot of cards. And my name is even on the box, which is super exciting. Yeah. But after that, just a few months ago, you did another Kickstarter with a smaller deck, a smaller pack of cards. And that was also a successful Kickstarter. And so this is what I'm going to do. Streetwalkers, the first two people who email me at fascinationstreetpod at gmail.com just put in the subject line, you know it, exclamation point. The first two of those that I get, I'm going to send you a copy of this game. Wow. It is so much fun. I love this game so much. Now, John, how did you come up with this game and why? Well, this game has actually been around as an idea since before. I made that movie I talked about, which was in 1990. When I first got here, I started doing freelance writing. And a friend of mine got me a job working on Trivial Pursuit, the Millennium Edition, which was going to be a CD-ROM, if you remember those. And then as a result of that, I got a job on Jeopardy Online. The World Wide Web had just, it was the first internet bubble 20 years ago. So I was writing these trivia questions for Trivial Pursuit and then, then Jeopardy sports Jeopardy and rock and roll Jeopardy. And we invented Jeopardy 2001, which was a science fiction and technology variant. So I got it in my head that, well, first of all, I loved writing trivia and I sort of got a sense of what good trivia was. And Jeopardy has this stick where you got to come up with a question for the answer. And I thought, well, if you want to make a trivia game, you got to have some kind of structure to it. And I came up with this idea of applying that to a movie game right? Which was, if I say two stars, can you tell me what movie it is? You know, like Meryl Streep and Tom Hanks. Can you name the movie that they're both in? Oh, uh, the, the papers? Yeah, right. The Post. All right. The Post. Yeah, there you go. Sorry. And which is amazing that Meryl Streep and Tom Hanks have only been in one movie together, right? That is kind of amazing. Yeah. So anyway, I started out with just movies. So that would be this, you have two clues and then you have an answer. And then I realized that that two clues and have an answer, oh, you could apply it to states. What states are adjacent to two things? And you could apply it to rivers. What river goes through these two countries? Oh, and you can apply it to countries because they, oh, and wait, you could actually expand it to apply it to almost everything. It's really funny that it took me a while to realize that. So I had this idea of two clues leading to one answer 20 years ago. And I had that in my head, and I, then I realized you could, it could expand it to all these different things. And then pretty soon I realized, oh, you could expand it to everything. And because it's two different clues, you can make it you know, work for other people. So you can follow the show on Twitter at Fascination and then an abbreviation for Street and PD. So that's capital F-A-S-C-I-N-A-T-I-O-N, capital S-T, capital P-D. 
Steve Owens can be found at all lowercase Steve Dave and then the number 47. That is a 4 and a 7. And John Sylvain can be found on Twitter at capital S-Y-L-V-A-I-N and then B-B-B. That is three Bs. And of course, you can go to fascinationstreetpod.com to find the show. Well, friends, spring has sprung, which means it's time for you to jump into style. And what style has Henderson's Pants got in store for you? How about a snappy pair of spring breakers? The trousers that just don't know when to quit. Literally. They're just the thing for those college students, be they he-men or co-eds, that are itching to spread their wings and their legs for an exciting furlough from dusty books and an even dustier sense of responsibility. Designed with fun in mind, Henderson Spring Breakers are casual enough to wear to the beach in Miami or dressy enough to sit down to dinner in Paris. The fabric is ultra stain resistant, keeping liquor, blood, or even vomit from dashing your hopes at making a great impression. Even if the only people you're out to impress are those presiding at your arraignment hearing in Tijuana. What's more, spring breakers are unisex, which means you can wear them no matter who you might be having sex with. Men, women, assorted barnyard animals, even power tools. These pants don't care who or what you end up hooking up with, or where for that matter. Originally designed for Fat Tuesday, Bacchus, the Roman party god, and the Red Hour. Henderson Spring Breakers are available wherever young people like to get face down in their own spew. That's Henderson's, makers of fine ass gaskets and crotch covers since 1903. And now back to Suckatan. Thank you, Bill Haywatt. It is the end of March, but it is, as far as I understand, still kind of the beginning of spring. Although my understanding is that the temperatures where I am are supposed to get into the 30s at night. So, I, I you don't know. Weather. Anyway... Finally tonight, the Bill Burt Podcast from All Things Comedy. This is a soundcast. It is relatively new, uh, even though they're up to episode 50. It is a conversation between comedians Bill Burr and Burt Kreischer, each of whom have their own separate soundcasts. The description for this particular soundcast is simply Bill and Burt prattle about inflated stats, vengeance, and showboating. So the clip is from an episode from March 10th, 2021, which is episode 50. And its description says, Bill and Bert prattle, again there's that great word, about shrooms, the royal family, and surf dreams. And the clip specifically contains the beginning of the aforementioned shroom prattling. I went out to the desert. Uh, the, I still call it the dessert because of uh, <laughs> Greg Giraldo. I still say it. <laughs> When your balls are sticking onto your leg out here in the in the dessert, um, we went to uh, me and the family uh, went out to uh, Joshua Tree. Really? So yeah, I went out there and we had everybody got tested and shit. We had I have some other family. We came in, whatever, did the whole thing. So uh, I tried mushrooms for the first time because I was in the desert. I was like, I gotta, I gotta do, I you know, I gotta see what it's about. Somebody told me it would help my tinnitus, which is total bullshit. Um, <laughs> these fucking mushroom people, they think they understand the universe after they take it. Dude, you fucking understand the vibrations, man. <laughs> so it's just like, no, dude, you were tripping. Um, like you look at a lamp a whole different way. So anyway, I took it and, and my buddy told me, he goes, take four squares. So I said, all right, I'm taking six. I want to go on a ride. Jesus Christ, Bill. Uh, well, fortunately, my wife told talked me out of it. She goes, take four. And I'm like, typical. Pull it back on the reins. <laughs> yeah, I wanted I wanted to be the Lizard King. I'm like, if I'm going to fucking do it, I want to do it. So I, I, I ate the four squares, immediately really nauseous. It was in the form of chocolate, just really like, and, and the not, the, being nauseous lasted the whole time. And the other dude that I did him with was feeling the same thing. So... Right. You know, at first it starts feeling like a pot cookie. Like, all right, I've been here before. And then it just kind of keeps going. Like, passes the pot house. Like, oh, shit, we're still going down the road. <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know, the TV starts looking like it's getting bigger. And then all of a sudden it kind of looks like maybe it's going to fall on me. But I'm just sort of enjoying it. Going like, oh, I know that's not happening. That's bolted into the fucking wall. And that's a TV. TVs don't grow. You're able to keep it like, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I started talking myself through it. And somebody else there was like, Jesus Christ, Bill, just go with it. It's like, well, I don't want to start freaking out. 
I got to remind myself a toilet can't breathe. I'm sorry. Right? I got to remind myself a toilet can't breathe. No, because I wanted to take a leak and the toilet was going, was kind of doing this a little bit. Just a little bit. So then um, I got about two hours into it and I was just like, all right, cool. I need to go lay down. So I go lay down and uh, and I felt this, uh, I told this on my, my podcast, I felt this profound sense of loneliness and not feeling loved in this depressive thing. So now I'm in my head going, what the fuck is this? And I'm looking at my wife going like, did I marry the wrong person, right? <laughs> and I'm like, no, no. And then, so then what I did was like, all right, let me think about something that I know I love and I know loves back, you know? Not like I don't know I love my wife, but yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. married any given day, it's like, you know, like you're the best thing that ever happened to me. Like next day, I'm fucking out of here, right? That's marriage, right? <laughs> so I go, let me think, <laughs> let me think about my kid. So I think about my kids and I still felt the same thing. And I'm going like, okay, so this isn't that. And I realized because I had gone, I, I'm going to therapy again. All of this shit that I was running from, this is the feeling I had growing up. And this stuff is like coming out of my pores now. It, so it wasn't a bad thing. So I just had to sort of sit in it and realize that that's what this is. And uh, I don't know, like the next day I was all clear. I was just like, wow, man, I really like, and I was still, I, I, through the rest of the trip, I was like, man, I just slept, walked through my thirties and forties, just trying to achieve shit because of the way I felt when I was a kid, the, what I did to fix that was to just start doing shit. And if I did all of these things and accomplished these things, then people would think I was cool. And then they'd stop fucking with me. That was my little kid way of getting out of this shit. And now I'm in my fifties and that shit doesn't go away till you deal with it. So I'm finally stopping and like sitting with it. So it ended up being like this great thing um, for me to kind of like deal with, to kind of have that goodwill hunting. It's not your fault. Yeah. <laughs> fucking moment. So it was weird because all, all my friends that, that I told, I was going to take them. We're all excited because they thought like, I, you know, I was hoping I'd be like, dude, I felt love. I felt oneness with the fucking universe. I wanted to hug a cactus. It wasn't that. It was just sort of like, like this fucking empty thing. But I was able to like figure it out. Thank God I had kids. Oh, yeah. If I didn't have kids. I'd be fucking <laughs> looking at my wife sideways and ruining God. that. So that, that was, that was my trip. Now, as far as I can tell, the show does not have a dedicated Twitter account, but you can reach out to Bill Burr on Twitter at all lowercase b-i-l-l-b-u-r-r, and Bert Kreischer could be also reached on Twitter at all lowercase b-e-r-t-k-r-e-i-s-c-h-e-r. And to find the soundcast, you can go to allthingscomedy.com. No funny spellings, it's a-l-l-t-h-i-n-g-s-c-o-m-e-d-y dot com. And here we are again. It's the end of the show and the end of March 2021. In April, Sakatash will be celebrating 10 years of soundcasting. It's a little hard for me to believe it has been an entire decade. Maybe it is because my sense of time is somewhat more acute as I scrape the underside of 50. With three years to go, admittedly, but really it feels close enough to me. And it only gets closer with each passing moment. I started listening to podcasts or soundcasts around 2008 and have been participating or interacting with them in various ways since then. In October, my friend Hunter Block and I will have been creating our own soundcast, one anti-social show, for five years. Incidentally, you can find links to that show and pretty much everything I currently have published, sound or video-wise, at www.tysonsainter.com. This last year was dominated by the COVID-19 pandemic, and this year has pretty much continued to be. Vaccines are finally available, though, so that's a good thing. I am reminded of those slices of giant trees, such as redwood trees, that have little markers or plaques on them that point to certain rings and tell you what year it was when that ring was formed. Sometimes there are blackened rings because there happened to be a fire during that stage of the tree's development, and yet there are many more rings to get through before the outermost layer that existed when that tree was ultimately felled 
or perhaps fell of its own accord. There is an audio version of that phenomena, and it is every soundcast made during and after COVID-19 that talks about COVID-19 and remembers COVID-19. We aren't in those outer layers yet, but as long as time keeps moving forward and people keep having conversations in some sort of archivable audio format, we will be. Can't say whether or not soundcasting will ultimately fall like a giant tree, but... Well, have you ever seen a fallen tree that has other, newer trees growing on and around it? My guess is that is more or less what will happen. So until then, thank you again for listening. Tune in next week for Mark Hershon's episode 247. Wear a mask, wash your hands, be decent to each other, and if you like the show's format and think other folks might also, please pass the succotash. You've been listening to Succotash Shut In, the Soundcast Stimulus Package, with your host, Tyson Saner. Brought to you by Henderson's Pants and... Imagine your company's name right here. Find us on the web at SuccotashShow.com, on iTunes, on Stitcher, on iHeartRadio, on YouTube, on SoundCloud, on the (laughs) laughable app, and tattooed on your mother's rear end. You can hear us streaming and like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter at Succotash Show. Email us at tyson at succotashshow.com. Or call into the Succotash Skype line at our toll call number 818-921-7212. That number again is 818-921-7212. You can also upload clips from your favorite comedy soundcast directly to us using our direct upload link at hightail.com slash you slash Succotash. Production of Succotash is overseen by Joe Paulino through the auspices of Studio P. Sausalito, the home of the hit. Our hosts are Mark Hershon and Tyson Saner. Our musical director is Scott Carvey. Our booth assistant is still Kenny Durgis. And until next time, I'm your loyal booth announcer, Bill Haywatt, reminding you to please wash your hands and pass the Succotash. Goodbye. This has been a Succotash Patch production.